Hey, hello. So things all over the place here. All right. So welcome to this week's crypto mastery class. And we're going to um, dive into some charts, some into some news. I'll share with you some of the things I learned at the uh, Bitcoin conference. And uh, those of you that um, are new, welcome. If you're watching this on uh, YouTube and you like the uh, content, make sure to like that and hit subscribe so you don't miss anything. Uh, so you should be able to see my screen right now, and I see a bunch of you here today. A lot of people wondering what happens next in Bitcoin. Uh, that is a big question, and I've been spending a lot of time going around the sort of different talking heads to figure out uh, what the consensus is. And um, now, now consensus is often dangerous, and I'll just tell you right up front that this is a really tough one, and it could go either way. And there's some really prominent people that are heavily short and think that what the top is in, and there are some really smart people thinking that we're going much higher. And uh, we're going to unpack that a little bit, and uh, I'm going to talk to you guys a bit about you know, how to use our signals, of course, on how to see what the markets are telling us. Because as you always hear me say, show me the charts, and I'll tell you the news. So uh, let's dive into the news a little bit. I'll just put this away, say hi to a few people, Mary, KS, and uh, Terry, Paul, Perry. Okay, so, and everybody else, welcome. Um, by the way, if you like what you see here too, we do dive deeper into all this in our M3 Active Trader class that's on uh, Wednesdays, and you can learn more about all of those things at our website, moonstream.io, and I know some of you who have just joined the uh, M3 trading class started out here on these classes, uh, and that's fine. Um, this is a sort of introductory class to uh, give you guys an idea of what we do and also a training on our indicators. But uh, just a quick jump over here on our website at moonstream.io. Then you can <clears throat> click around a little bit on, on here and find out our other services like this Moonstream uh, Active Trader. Uh, that's really for more active trading calls. And I did make a call the other night that had a nice little gain. And uh, we don't do uh, coin picks on this class, but you can find it more at M3, uh, moonstream.io slash M3. And then also the uh, main site, uh, there's uh, links to our Retire Rich classes and also if anyone wants any one-on-one -on -one coaching i'm doing a limited number of clients there also some free information down below that you can sign up for as well all right so with that out of the way uh, let's dive in so um you know here's some news here we're just going to go through it i want to start with the daily hodl um billionaire mike novogratz a uh, great guy raises 113 million for galaxy digital's new crypto venture so there's lots of good news out there but um, none of it should be immediately applicable. This is kind of the, the longer term. And what I always say is to sort of create a frame around all the information that's out there. So is the current frame bullish or bearish? But right away, right now, the signals that we're going to be showing and looking at today gives us that immediate sort of what do we do next? So this is all good news, but this is kind of raising money that will be deployed later. You know, the overarching black cloud that we have is that uh, the U.S. government is is about to sell two billion dollars of their um, their Silk Road seized uh, Bitcoin? Now, the reality is, some people say that um, you know this is going to be sold over the counter. And let me try to go over my signal here and uh, put this away. Now, where did that thing go? I've got uh, here it is. So here's an image from Arkham, which shows that the U.S. government, if you can see this right here, U.S. government, Silk Road DOJ confiscated funds. So they've just moved $2 billion of that. This is all trackable on the blockchain, guys. That's why, uh, that's why you know, it's, the, it's a distributed ledger. Decentralized distributed ledger is a good thing. Now, this is amazing, by the way. They sent $2.02 .02 billion of Bitcoin, and the fee was 0.66 cents. <laughs> so amazing imagine trying to send that much money through the uh, traditional banking channels but um so here's the thing though and originally i sort of panicked and said uh-oh but um this generally would be sold otc over the counter which is kind of an auction style and won't suppress the price uh in theory um but uh and we can see that here if you're ever looking at this information if this had said from here and to say binance or in one of the exchanges, then that would be more likely to be sold on the open market. You know, that would be most likely scenario. So when we see large whales moving large amounts of crypto and Bitcoin onto say Kraken and Binance, et cetera, um, typically that's, they're about to sell it. So this is an unknown wallet address. And um, so, again, it should be selling at auction. However, we're seeing a bunch, a lot of sell pressure here. And I think that, um, you know, um, this is um, is partially 
because the shorts really are piling in. I've seen that also a lot of the chat rooms. You know, I do spend a little bit of time dancing around in there. And, um, you know, that 70K level is where a lot of them had their put their shorts in. So and those big round numbers tend to be uh, magnets for that. Now, there's some other elements in there. We won't get too far into it. But uh, because, again, all we can really do is trade the news. But there's still that sort of $2 billion, um, you know, being sold, put in the open market. And you have to think of it this way. Even though it doesn't affect price directly, it's still competition for wallet share. I mean, one comp company A versus company B, even if they're in somewhat different markets, if they have the same customer, a customer only has so many dollars to spend, you're competing for wallet share. And so, um, so that's worth considering. And uh, you know, the the buyers are only have so much to buy, and so um, it's depressing the price on the open market. And uh, also, the shorts are piling in on that. So, you know, we're going to get to the charts in a minute. I do think we have further downside here in the near term, um, and um, there are some um, very bullish scenarios, and I guess one or two very bearish scenarios that we'll unpack deeper in the M3 class tomorrow. That's not the scope of this class. But uh, let's just go through the news a little bit. I wanted to give you guys a high level. And by the way, the Bitcoin conference was excellent. So if you haven't, you can go to YouTube and uh, go and watch some of the uh, Bitcoin conference. And um, so let me just pull that up here. And as you can see the keynotes there on uh, YouTube. So Michael Saylor, RFK, and uh, some of the other ones, uh, Trump was there, of course. And so um, uh, I have to be careful not to say that because then the, uh, the the YouTube doesn't like that stuff. So anyway, um, not here to talk about that. Today, uh, Bitcoin 2025 tickets are on sale, by the way. That'll be in Las Vegas, which would be amazing. Um, but you can see uh, all the, the interviews here on YouTube here. You've got uh, Russell Brand was great. Um, I'm not going to go into that here. You guys can go Google it. But some really excellent uh, speeches. So I do recommend uh, that you go and spend some time if you have the luxury, if you work from home or even in the evening. Really go through those. Uh, and uh, I'm just going through them twice, actually. So anyway, uh, let's uh, this article here I want to talk about. And I want to caution you guys into getting too excited about this. You might have heard that the rumor that Bitcoin, the, the U.S. government may use it as a Bitcoin reserve asset or as a reserve asset. And there was rumors going around that, um, uh, you know, again, I, I'm not going to mention the name because the algorithms don't like uh, that. But uh, sort of big T there, he was uh, the rumor was they would speculate um, and say they would do that. And he didn't he didn't talk about that. He said that they would hold on to all of the reserves that the U.S. government has, which is 200,000 Bitcoin, would not dump that on the open market. And um, <clears throat> so that's good. And also that um, it would be very pro pro crypto regulation. Uh, Senator Loomis and uh, Senator uh, Scott, Tim Scott from uh, Nashville, was had a great talk there. And uh, they're both very pro Bitcoin, both senators. And, uh, you know, Tim Scott likely would be the Treasury Secretary under a new administration. And again, pro crypto. Guys, if we're here, it's a single single issue vote, pretty much uh, the um, the opposite side, the current administration, very anti crypto. So um, um, that's uh, that's kind of was the theme there at the show. But um, you guys make your own decisions. But um, worth noting, let's see. And here uh, the Winklevoss saying that. Um, Again, I'm not going to say names here because it's uh, these algorithms really don't like to political uh, banter. Uh, it says the uh, this person uh, moved to reset crypto relations could be a big bluff. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I would um, be inclined to uh, be cautious with that too. I really don't want to get into that angle, not getting into politics here. So, um, <clears throat> but here's um, how this article here about here's how Bitcoin could smoothly replace central banking. Um, you know, there's lots, there's no shortage of news out there. I'm skimming for anything that's important. And um, I think, let's see, Novogratz issues warning on the U.S. national debt uh, says there's only one solution to the crisis. Well, you know, similarly, um, and I believe it was Cynthia Loomis said that if we did go and buy and put uh, Bitcoin as a reserve asset, that um, it could solve and wipe out all of our debt. You, you know, the if the uh, if the, the price goes up significantly. I'm right now trying to sort of get an idea of what everyone's saying out there. And I have looked around a bit. Uh, this person, so this analyst I haven't heard of, predicts massive rally breakout for Bitcoin. So here's the caution, everybody. Be aware, always be aware of the hype cycle. Because when the news starts coming out and it's all really good and it's amazing, um, you need to remember, and if you remember in 2021, going into the top, we were, we were so bullish. Everyone was so bullish. 
you know, or, oh, we're going to 100,000, uh, not so fast. And all of these news media, a large percentage of their, their articles and media is placed either paid or a PR person put it in or the owner of the publication says, hey, I want you to publish more on this. Uh, there's very few independent, fully independent news sources. So just keep that in mind. And so when I start seeing things like this, we're on the cusp of a large rally. So typically institutions, they buy low. And if you're familiar with the Wyckoff patterns, they're buying low in an accumulation phase and then uh, selling high in a distribution phase. And they really need us as retail traders as their liquidity. And so the best way for them to sell large amounts of crypto is if all the news is bullish and all the Bitcoiners have come back from the show and they're buying and they're like, yes, I'm going to buy because Big T there said, I, you know, don't never sell your Bitcoin. And, um, you know, a year ago he was, you know, was anti, but, um, you know, glad to have the administration on board with that. But do you get my point? So this I discount a bit. This is from a, a week ago, actually, the 23rd. So I just noticed that. And we did get a, we did get a nice little rally at the show which was immediately erased once Bitcoin hit 70,000. Um, if here's, you see this button though right here, submit press release. A lot of this press is just like opinions. And so <clears throat> um, they're, they're suggesting we're mirroring the point we're about to have a parabolic rally. Um, you know, none of this matters, you guys. This is all basic stuff. Just uh, we ignore it. We're going to go into the charts. I'll tell you what I think because I've got some um, you know strong opinions on e either way. Uh, we need to be a little bit impartial right now. I would not be fully invested right now because uh, we, we could be in for a bigger drop if we can't clear that 72, 74K region this time. And it's not looking so good. It's not looking so good. So we covered this. Let's jump over into here. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk about this, that uh, Bitcoin has to go up a lot if the US uses Bitcoin as a reserve asset. Um, yeah, that guys, this is exciting, but this could be years down the road. This doesn't happen overnight or with a stroke of a pen. Okay, so park that in the back of your mind that, hey, that would be great, but uh, it's not happening anytime soon. And um, <clears throat> so let's just see, well, as we're financialized, this is trying to sell national security risk. Um, you know, again, these are all opinions and and I tend to follow uh, only a few people that, that I really, really trust. But so here's kind of the overall here again. Um, he said uh, stopping short of establishing a Bitcoin strategic reserve. He did have very bullish comments. And uh, first of all, he said that day one, he would fire Gary Gensler and the whole place erupted. And he said, wow, I didn't know you didn't like this guy that much. Maybe I should say it again. So he says, first on day one, I'll fire Gary Gensler and everybody just that was the kind of the highlight of the energy in the room. So, um, and, and I think we can all agree with he, uh, Gensler has not been a very good proponent of all this. I do believe in regulation as long as it's clear and meaningful, beneficial regulation. And it hasn't been. They've been enforcing through regulation. Uh, I did see some in the news that XRP was having a little bit of a boost and maybe decoupling a bit on <clears throat> on the Bitcoin uh, pricing. So we'll look at that, although we're not huge, big, uh, huge XRP bulls. So uh, he did say they pledged a national Bitcoin stockpile. Most of you watching this probably have heard all this news here yet, but um, uh, all of this is uh, is interesting. Let's see. Uh, game changer. Congress introduces radical Bitcoin bill. So a look at that again. Elon Musk, of course, saying he would donate something like forty five million dollars per day to um, <clears throat> President Trump's campaign. And is uh, flipping over, though, he's saying he's now a believer in Bitcoin. And uh, and it breaks the science. So, so we'll look at these. The reason I will look at this is Elon can certainly uh, can certainly um, flip. The, the, Elon can certainly drive the market. If he says we're buying at Tesla and we bought a lot, <clears throat> that did rally the market back in twenty twenty one. And uh, comments and looks. Okay, so I don't go too far in the news, you guys. I want to get to the charts, which I do have pulled up here. And the so we have the absolute game changer. Congress introduces radical Bitcoin bill. And as primes, uh, President Trump primes price for hundred trillion dollar surge. Yeah, just again, this is this is designed. This clickbait headline is designed to get you to click and read and follow and subscribe, but also buy, click on their ads and everything else. You know, so keep that in mind. And uh, I'm not sure why my wallet opened there. Blockchain advisor, here's, here's a subscription button, like I said. And uh, let's see. 
um, billionaire investor Mark Cuban issuing crazy Bitcoin prediction. Um, you guys, just a lot of this is noise, right? It's just so much bullish and bearish news that uh, I'm trying to look at his ear there. His ear looks fine. But um, anyway, and of the policy. Yeah, so this is this is good. He says, if elected, that uh, it will be the policy of my administration, the United States of America, to keep 100% of all the Bitcoin in uh, Bitcoin the U.S. government currently holds or requires in the future, we'll keep it all. Um, I'm not sure if that's good or not. If they, well, if they're going to go, if they're going to go after it uh, nefariously, I don't think they would. But if they could get it back from hackers, that would be great. Maybe you could go over and uh, have another meeting with Kim Jong Un and say, "Hey, can you give us all that Bitcoin back? You guys, all your hackers have been stealing." Unlikely, but um, <clears throat> this will serve in effect as the core of the strategic national Bitcoin stockpile. I mean, that's very good. I mean, this certainly uh, will know more as we get closer to the election. And I do think that um, that will re um, uh, the markets will react very favorable to all this, both business owners and uh, the crypto investors. Let's see, P Boyne, uh, BlackRock CEO, just ignore him. Um, okay, so moving right along here, Elon. Uh, Elon Musk says uh, sees merit in Bitcoin following uh, President Trump's speech at Bitcoin 2024. Um, these guys have become buddies. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, let's see. Okay, so he's not going to be promoting it. If you see anyone promoting it, it's not me. Um, I will alert you guys, by the way, to a very elaborate scam that's happening. I had someone on Facebook send it out to me, and he said, hey, um, what's this deal with Elon? And he's saying, so send me your whatever Bitcoin you send me, I'll double it and send it back to you. Now, this scam has been going on for years with Michael Saylor, and they'll have a YouTube video of Michael Saylor talking inside of another page that has wrappers with all these offers on it and i said i said hey that's a scam but actually the new iteration of that is he said no he's saying it so be aware that the ai these days can clone people their voices their mannerisms in fact i'd say 20 to 30 percent of the ads you see today on instagram anywhere are fake they're ai they're not people and that's going to go up to 70 or 80 percent in the future because uh, the AI is so good at knowing the inflection points, what to say. And there are websites not to get out, go down a rabbit hole, uh, but there are websites like Hey Jen and others where you can go in and, and do some video for 30 seconds or a couple minutes and it'll clone you. You can create a clone and it's, it's very hard to tell. So if you see anybody out there on video uh, and it doesn't sound right, it's probably a fake. So you use your critical thinking even now more than ever. Okay, so um, that, uh, that is one that you want to be aware of. All right, I want to get through to the charts here as soon as possible. Forbes all making me, no, thank you. Uh, real quick, Cointelegraph, how high, how high can BTC go after the bullish speech? Uh, this article must be a few days old because it's already dropped down below. And of course, they're all trying to sell these ads. All right, so with that out of the way, uh, let's take a deep breath and dive into the charts. If you guys have any uh, questions or comments here, let me pull these up. And um, Perry says there's an article there on Cointelegraph about the government declaring some cryptos, Solana, being securities or not. Uh, how big of a deal is that for the price action? Yeah, I think I saw that. Let me pull it up real quick. I saw the headline, SEC backs down on claiming Sol, ADA, Matic uh, tokens are securities and Binance suit. But um, again, show me the charts. Tell me, I'll tell you the news. It ha haven't really reacted. I was looking at my charts over here. And uh, so the SEC retraced its request for court ruling, declass, to classify. So it's kind of a big, it's falling in deaf ears. And so, but isn't that interesting? Because when they, you know, these markets are so skittish. I think it's a good word. They're skittish. And so when they said, when they came out and ruled that Polygon, ADA, and XRP are securities and everything dumped. Now they're quietly saying, hey, you know, we're, we're, gonna, we're not going to do that now. And now nothing's happening. So <clears throat> let's see. Um, we'll certainly look at the, the charts and just skimming through this. Yeah, I mean, this was interesting, a dialogue too. He said... Um, uh, that President, former President Trump said they, they pledged to end the war on crypto. And so and certainly there has felt like there's been a war against it. And uh, the U.S. will be the crypto capital of the planet. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, here <laughs> said he would fire Gary Gensler the first day as president. They were giving away um, shirts. Let's see. Um, let's see. Shirts. Well, the shirts were like day one. They're also going to free Ross Albrecht, the creator of Silk Road. 
who got like two life sentences plus 40 years, uh, for which is crazy. Uh, he said he would free him on day one. So and uh, yeah, so that's about it. Let, I don't know that I want to read that, you guys. Let's take a look at what's happening. All right. So now that we got all through that, um, you know, we do go through these in a little bit more detail in the M3 class tomorrow. Um, see a kind of an, a wedge pattern forming on the Bitcoin monthly chart. You know, I've had this drawn here for a while and the possibility of coming back, dipping down in this 50K region. And it uh, doesn't mean it has to, but uh, it would give us a lot more oomph. Uh, I've never used that word in a video before, but, you know, a lot more oomph to go higher. It's like jumping off the roof to land on the trampoline. And so the, you know, the market uh, or so the, the, um, the angle of the of this here would take us down and likely hold a push higher. Now, typically what we do see, though, and just to point out, as we see three inflection points on the uh, bull mania or the parabolic run. So if we go back in time, you know, we see this kind of an angle held here, held here, held here. And then we sort of put putting in a newer angle here at some point if the uh, parabola is to hold and the sort of um, parabolic bull run happens, then we would see a sort of a new angle like that. So, so that's what we're watching for. And the big question is, can we hold here and break above that 72,000 level? And I really, I want to see it above 74K uh, before I'm really fully bullish. It's just too volatile, you guys. And uh, so some of our signals here on our RSI here on the monthly chart, we did see that sort of topping out with some bearish divergence uh, all the way back in April. Sometimes these are early. So we saw it back in March of 2021. And uh, then, of course, the markets rolled over a bit later on the uh, MACD. It's getting pretty toppy here. And, you know, what I don't like to see is all of this open air is what I call it between the uh, two segments of the MACD. Because back here in 2021, we started to see that. And I was saying, guys, this doesn't feel this. I think we're topping out here. And um, <clears throat> the um, I got thrown off by the price. Of course, this is not the price of Bitcoin. This is just the. Um, uh, the MACD. And then once we got this far up here in November, I have screenshots in the M3 Active Trader class from October saying, guys, I think we need to get into cash here. This feels high. November uh, was saying, I think it's time to get out. And then we started to see this thing coming down. And uh, while we did have a promotion in December, you know, the, the thing started rolling over like the third week in December. And I was like, get everyone get out, get into cash. And when we saw that crossover in January, I was pounding the table to get into cash. And sure enough, we saw that roll over and we all know what happened next. So <clears throat> it does appear we have some time on this. Just start kind of be wary of the fact this thing is starting to feel a little toppy. And, uh, you know, um, we have got we'll talk about some other scenarios here and let's see, make sure that's log mode. Uh, that thing got bit jiggered here. I got to put it back in log mode. So, um, yeah, the RSI and the monthly chart. We'll look at this on a weekly, actually, and the um, the RSI itself started to kind of turn up. The monthly is a bit la of a lagging indicator, but sort of putting in a wedge pattern as well. So there's not clear signals here either way. A quick look at the DXY, and so DXY kind of breaking out, breaking out of its. Um, it's downward trending trend line. So we'll unpack that a little bit more tomorrow too. But if we start seeing the DXY pushing higher, that's not good, you guys. Uh, it's just this sideways chop. I do think August is going to be a slow sideways chop until later in the month. Uh, and those of you who um, bought our recent Market Cycle Secrets course, you know that we're sort of projecting a cycle bottom around the third week in August, later in August. Looking at the IBIT here on the four-hour chart, again, usually we, we do these reserve these for our M3 trading classes, but I wanted to just share it with you guys because it's interesting. You know, the uh, the IBIT um, is le usually a leading indicator and it's now below this blue line, the midline of the Bollinger Band and um, <clears throat> starting to look like it's going to roll over. And, uh, and that's not good. Also, <clears throat> there's a big gap here. These uh, gaps on the one and four hour uh, IBIT tend to fill kind of like the CME gaps. And so these other ones I've circled, see this gap here when it dropped, pushed up and filled that gap, drove down here. This gap here ultimately came back to fill this gap, created a gap here, filled it here. Another one, the, all of these have filled, okay, except this big one right here. And that would sort of take things down on the high bit, quite a bit down um, in the 33. That's like a 20% drop on that. So we'll be watching uh, for that. We'll talk about it more tomorrow. Um, this is a study I shared last week in the M3 class, kind of on the state of things and, um, you know, where we might see a cycle top. 
Uh, this is a bit beyond the scope of this class and just wanted to share it with you though. And um, so it's a lot going on here. We did cover it last week. So um, there's a Fibonacci channel here and I have some things I've turned off though. Let me just remember to turn these back on. So where did that go? We have the Bitcoin icon. We don't need that. I thought I'd create a folder in this. Where did that thing go, you guys? Maybe that didn't save. And essentially moving averages the curves. Uh, the trend line, was that in this other one? Maybe it's in this one. Oh, that's what it was. Okay, so this is just showing the cycles here. So I'll put that away. I'll open that up for you guys. Basically, uh, we're talking about the one-week moving average, the one-week 50 moving average. When that starts turning up, the, typically the parabolic rise is typically coming. But I don't even want to show this to you because it's like um, I, I don't – I feel like this is – there's a lot of headwinds against this right here. And uh, the the first time that Bitcoin's really been through a recession, that's the big wild card and the elephant in the room. Do we go into a deep recession? And um, and so, and I think that's that's something we have to be aware of, you guys. Uh, one more article, KS uh, just shared on the block, saying the SEC may be willing to punt their stance on deeming token securities. Uh, this is not loading up for me. I'll just, we'll just tell your headline. If the link is in the chat, you guys, not a done deal. They can flip on a dime. This since political judge has to favor them right now. Yeah. So there's, there's, it's just kind of pointless to go down that rabbit hole. Uh, Perry says the coin maxis, especially Bitcoin seem counterproductive to the overall goal of financial independence. Yeah. The, you know, the maxis in certainly Michael Saylor is one. Uh, he had a great uh, talk and he said, you know, what I one of the highlights was he said uh, he had a slide about um, and maybe I'll share it uh, in the in tomorrow's chat in our class. But basically he said all people he had a compelling argument, all people, uh, governments and uh, see all people, companies and, and countries should have Bitcoin as their bank and just have it because you can borrow against it over time. And then that way you will reserve the the sort of sanctity of your money because otherwise it's been it's deflating and that's michael saylor's argument so throughout all of the uh the time that he's been on around and online so you, you know certainly go watch his explanations of that uh, it's beyond the scope of this here uh perry's saying bricks assets will become the global reserve currency way before bitcoin does um yeah yeah the global bitcoin reserve i think you know the conversation was about if the u.s adopts it as part of its reserve but um you never know and and um i just think it's too far out because there are also uh, senator loomis had said we should buy like 45 percent of all the bitcoin I, and don't quote me on that somebody was saying that we should spend this much buy nine billion of bitcoin and which is 45 percent actually more because there's a lot of it's missing and, and would that be an incentive for other countries to want to <clears throat> use bitcoin also not if we own half of it. That just gives us more power, right? So, um, and so, yeah, Perry, there's a lot of different directions this can go. So um, let's just open this up here and what I wanted to share. Yeah, this is interesting because, and I'll put these callouts back on temporarily because, and again, we covered this last week in in the um, M3 class. Usually our new studies are launched there first, but um, it's interesting that the time between sort of all-time highs in these parabolas. Now, now this is part, this is a cycle here. This is a sine wave. And what is not as accurate as true cycle theorists know, it can move around a little bit. Okay. But uh, uh, on here, we uh, where's the legend on this, which is missing? the these are different liquidities of different governments and i may have turned that off inadvertently so uh here there and maybe have to do the settings um yeah i'll just put this over so you can see it right so basically global liquidity so we have down here at the bottom uh, we've got uh, the bank of england here and then we've got uh, above that we have the uh, people's bank of china we have bank of japan and in blue is the uh, european um, central bank and then the Fed net. So, um, and the Fed net's going to be the larger one. And so, and that's usually a pretty good, uh, the Fed net's usually a pretty good uh, predictor of liquidity. And you can see all of these dip at the same time. <clears throat> and so, uh, liquidity dipped all through here. And then liquidity was on the rise. And of course, we've been seeing this push higher, right? So, if we look back in time when we had this liquidity pullback back in this region, and uh, so this is back in sort of 2016. And then liquidity, you see this dip right there? 
this thing looks to me like it's sort of liquidity pulls back all time high break. Bitcoin rallies this is a little bit maybe needs to be moved over. Uh, anyway, but then liquidity was on the rise and we saw this m m massive rally up to uh, that uh, old all time high around 20,000. Uh, by the way, I had uh, met an interesting person at the Bitcoin conference, and uh, he's a friend of a friend. He's on CNBC, and um, he worked on Wall Street. And he um, he was sort of famous for being on t on TV on Wall Street when Bitcoin hit twenty thousand. And he uh, he said, "Okay, that's it. I'm out." And he sold. And he said, he, "He's like, I might have been the guy, <laughs> but uh, anyway, he sold right at twenty k. Great call." Um, just to get back to this, though, however, we have on the liquidity uh, cycle here back in 2020, of course, came down and dipped in March of 2020 on the um, uh, the COVID you know, crash there. And uh, then we started seeing liquidity before that uh, coming into the market. Let's see, where was the COVID crash? It was May. Uh, was it 2020? Yeah, it was 20, March. It was 2020. Right in here. Liquidity was already on the rise, though. And you see this li liquidity really starting to get pumped into the market. See that massive surge of liquidity. And of course, that's what drove the market to the all-time highs. So the question is, when will we see a surge in liquidity here? Because we haven't yet. And uh, so that looks to be at some point in the future. And uh, we're just waiting on that. Once we see liquidity coming back in the market, that will kind of lead those market to market higher. However, um, <laughs> not that easy. So um, moving right along here to, let's see, I have a Bitcoin chart here on the daily. So um, here's my daily chart on Bitcoin. We'll start there. I know many of you have questions about that. And so uh, we um, there's a number of ways to look at this, and, and that's what you don't want to hear. But um, on the bearish side, you know, we have this downward sloping. Let me see if I can turn some of this off for you guys. And uh, we'll do this. So I'll uh, let me just do this. Might make it simpler. I'll make a new folder here using the the uh, I forget what they call this thing, the um, object tree that's what it's called of course so and we're going to say arrows do a little house cleaning uh, cleaning here put the brush there and this one this, the, all these will go in there that way i can turn them off temporarily is that working kind of working what happened here uh more brushes need to go into this maybe this is going to take too long no nope, we almost got it and then we got this one beautiful now we can turn off the brushes Let's see. Yeah. And of course, down in the lower hand, lower left corner, you see we have interest rate decisions from Bank of Japan, Bank of um, England, and also the Fed. So the markets are kind of quiet, waiting to see what happens uh, with the Fed this week. Most likely nothing happens. You know, we're going to get the, um, and we always look at that on our Wednesday class tomorrow on M3, look at the FOMC calendar. And so, um, you know, they're going to drop, they're going to drop, everyone's expecting a quarter point drop in September. What's really interesting is what uh, they see going into October, November, December. And uh, so again, we'll check that out tomorrow. And if you're not in M3, go over to moonstream.io slash M3. And uh, you can take a look at that. Where did I have that up, uh, queued up for you guys? Because uh, it's uh, it, it includes our indicators, which we're getting to next. Our base level indicators, we have live access to me in a 24-7 chat. You can read all about it here, exclusive members area with uh, some great uh, tools that you can use like dollar cost averaging worksheets and a portfolio tracker and some other cheat sheets like candlestick patterns, our DCA investing worksheet, portfolio tracker I mentioned, high probability trading patterns. But most of all, and uh, there's a picture of me, yes, I do trade. And the, most of all, you get you get daily access. I'm always posting in there and uh, trading picks. And so we had a really good one the other day on AIOZ uh, that hit its first profit target already. So, all right, back to the fun and into the charts. So what we're looking at here is the fact that we're still in an upward trending channel. And so that's the good news. And so this could even come down in, the, in this range here and still be in it. And so we have also a buy block. This is one of our indicators at Crypto Mastery. And of course, you can find out more about these at uh, cryptomastery.org slash pro for our, our pro indicators and cryptomastery.org slash pro. And you can learn more about these and watch that video on uh, one and you can learn all about these. But these, uh, these are giving us a serious edge and these new signals here the Rocket, uh, which is amazing, the Crypto Screener, the ERI Pro, that's our early reversal indicator I'll show you, the Trend Pro, our TSI, a trend strength indicator, our M3 order block detector, which has been huge for us and really giving us ability to peek behind the curtain, the RSI Pro, 
uh, the Bollinger Bands uh, Pro because uh, most Bollinger Bands are not keyed up correctly, especially the ones you use right out of TradingView and our signal line. So um, let me just back over to this. The order block detector. So we see this right down in here on the, on the daily. Now you notice that the cell blocks have disappeared, you guys. Well, have they? Uh, here's a tip that I was on a coaching call yesterday with one of our students and uh, he was asking about that. And so what I suggest that you always do is check other exchanges. Don't just go to Coinbase because if we go over to say Bitstamp, look, there, there they are. There's still serious sell pressure right up in here. <clears throat> this is interesting. Um, I want to look at this. A research firm predicts uh, Bitcoin game theory in play. Now this thing's in the way. And so uh, I don't know why this stupid chart's in the way. Uh, basically, <laughs> that's never happened before. Read, keep reading. Okay. The three uh, major central banks holding policy meetings results anticipated somewhat different. Um, what is this? That's a different article. All right. It was something about game theory. Sorry, guys. Um, let's not worry about that now. What I want to call your attention to is um, – um, these sell blocks are still there. They're also on the total market cap. And so we want to be paying attention to these because you see it came right up to that 70K region and it sold off. And I know a lot of the short sellers were selling heavily into that. And not to scare anybody, but uh, there's this person that I was watching um, you know, yesterday who's in a, a massive short on Bitcoin and plans to add to it. He's added 500,000 to his Bitcoin short. So he's a 1.2 million on that and uh the chart that he shares is, is fairly ominous uh i uh, i don't want to scare everybody but um you know these predictions are all over the board the um, the, the shorts you know there's no saying well certainly the confirmation bias is alive and well and uh, if you only have if all you have is a hammer everything looks like a nail so if you're a short seller um you're seeing everything very pol polarized but um I, I do want to echo that I am concerned here about this chart pattern because just going back over to the um, Coinbase version, and just to finish that thought, check a, a number of these. Kraken, also heavy sell pressure right above 70K. So it looks to me like we're having trouble. Well, obviously we're having trouble there. This buy block down around 63K is our last saving grace or hope because um, as you can see in my other charts, which I'll go back to, you know, most times breakouts happen on the third or fifth attempt. And guys, we may have just had that fifth attempt failure. Uh, so one and two and three and this, this one almost got there. Um, it's um, it's not definitive yet because we have two channels here and I'll go back to Coinbase where I have it drawn a little bit differently. And so you can see these lower peaks, one and two, three. So we got above this one. I'm going to suggest not financial advice, but if we push up to 70K again to be getting out of this market at least um, half and because this is not a bullish set up and even if we come back down on this i'm not saying it can't be uh an outlier but i've always i've been trading 25 years usually the third or fifth attempt will break to the upside or downside and um, we've seen that in our since in, in a lot of the uh, examples that i've given so <clears throat> this is um this is not good and and uh, so we're going to continue on doesn't mean it's definitive but um it is looking very bearish here we see our trend strength indicator rolling over on the daily below this 80 mark. And that is one of our key factors. Of course, um, if you don't already have the uh, trade success checklist, you can go over to our uh, website and download that. Maybe we'll do that together. Let's see Moonstream right there. And uh, we'll just do an example like we have been doing in last week's classes. So uh, of course, certainly if you're watching the replay, sign up for the weekly classes here. That's this class. You can sign up for a free newsletter here that's every Monday, which is excellent. And, of course, our trader success checklist as well as some other free reports. And I'm just going to shortcut over to this and uh, go straight to it So, because I know where it's located. And that way we can just save all the time of jumping through there. But you guys can go download it there. All right. <clears throat> what uh, I will need to download it here. So what you have to do, just download this. Open up the PDF because it's a it's interactive PDF. And that way I'll show you how to use this as your trade success checklist. So you can see that checking these off, these various buttons will give you a trade success score down the bottom. 
Now, uh, this works for bullish and bearish scenarios. So if we scroll down to the bearish side, we can start seeing some of those and uh, and giving it a negative score. So let's move that out of the way. And our so you know our, our radar is mixed, so that's good. What we don't want to see is an all red radar. The weekly is still showing bullish. The three month, the quarterly is still showing, showing bullish. So we're not quite there yet. Um, but <clears throat> you guys know that on the weekly chart uh, is where we most likely or most often look for the uh, the dreaded uh, four kings on the um, the downside. And so let me just jump over to that because as we saw back at the last market cycle top, that when these four things happen, that was the cycle top. And so I'm going to turn on our ERI, our early reversal indicator. That's not the one. I'll turn on my just check into Bollinger Bands. We'll come back to these. And he, the ERI Pro. The ERI stands for early reversal indicator, hence the name. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. So watch this, you guys. So we had back here at the market top in November of 2021, right? So we saw this signal here, and we had actually seen a few of them. Bearish engulfing candle, this early reversal indicator. So um, it's, uh, you might, if you're an experienced trader, you might say, hey, I've seen arrows before. Yeah, this is the visual version of the oscillator where there's a fair amount of quant work involved, including a Keltner channel and um, a certain, you know, moving certain, pattern within three time periods, which is what we noticed. It was an accidental discovery, you guys, but this has been um, the um, our, one of our best indicators and in teeing up with the other ones. The whole point of trading is having confluence. So when you see these line up, where I'm going with this, this pattern and this pattern and this and this, for me, is I'm getting out of the market no matter what. Okay, um, and that is, this is our trend strength indicator. This is our signal line indicator, this little green line, red line here, and our RSI Pro. All right, so just to call those out right here, when this goes red and goes below the line there, the 80 line, most oscillators, you know, you can watch the 20% and the 80%. So when it goes below 80, and then of course we have the uh, signal line going red, and I'll open these up so you can see them better. And then we have our RSI Pro. So these four together are very worris worrisome. And we did sort of see this back in here, you guys, just to jump ahead. Um, I had called this uh, up in here. I said, hey, we have this pattern, the bearish engulfing ERI. Now, the TSI had already gone down below 80, so it was a little bit janky. But right in here, it also went to, uh, below 80. And in this case, the ERI was later than the, the signal line. But our, but then our, our RSI Pro had triggered this uh, red line, this red circle here. So let me do this. Oops. Uh, it's overlapping a little bit. So I'm going to jump over to get my pointer tool and let's dive into that a little bit deeper. Okay. So with that, um, looking back here, we've got that trend strength pro when it comes down, it turns red as a war early warning sign. And then when it breaks below 80, that's that confirmation. And, uh, similarly when, uh, I mean, similarly when we saw it to over here and also over here, prices went down. And then our signal line went red. These are all different indicators. So it's confluence. So this went red. And then we saw it here when this went red. So, you know, these, again, they when they start to all line up, then you, you really, your confidence should be high. It's it's to pay attention to the signal. And, um, and so we saw it over here where this thing also went red on uh, the RSI Pro. So pretty simple, you guys. Um, you don't need to know what these are. This does indicate bearish divergence. So we saw that here. We saw that here. Sometimes this comes in early. Now, this is interesting. Uh, well, no. Okay. So this was some bullish divergence here. Uh, not here. I'm trying uh, this. But, but that was a while ago. And, and that's already played out. Okay. So basically, we are looking for, and if we see a bearish this is on a weekly chart. This is specifically what I'm looking at, you guys. It, when we see, if we see another bearish engulfing candle, um, which we sort of have already, we're kind of, uh, let me open this up. At the, the last week's candle actually was a spinning top, and that's usually directional change. And so, um, um, you know, this, this, is, this is bearish, you guys. I think we do go lower. The question is how far. I would not be buying... I would not be buying here waiting for some FOMO breakout. I did. I bought I bought some Bitcoin last week at the conference. I was happy it was up. Now it's pulled back below. If it pushes up in this region again, I'll likely be selling. I'll probably sell some of it. I'm going to keep one whole Bitcoin and just put it on uh, cold storage uh, somewhere because, you know, that's really 
all of our in the long run that's what we should be looking to do but uh so this is kind of bearish in golfing it, it's it's difficult because it's uh um it's steve nissen would say it is not because if you really zoom in he's a purist of course it seems that this does not fully engulf that but it for me it's close enough so if we start seeing an eri there and we uh, now we don't have a TSI red below 20 and, but we do have a signal line that's red. So there's not a clear signal here. And, and so what we want to be paying attention to are the uh, buy order blocks. And um, <clears throat> also really what we want to be looking at here is the uh, total market cap uh, because those signals were a lot more clear and uh, clearer. And so, you know, uh, usually Bitcoin leads, but we can see this here where we've had multiple bearish engulfing candles and ERIs throughout the since uh, since March here and here with ERIs. So sure enough, these signaled the price would likely go down. OK, and typically just if you're new here, typically two or three of these aligning is enough for me. So we had bearish ERIs and RSIs showing bearish divergence. So right back here, pretty clear we would head lower. And then uh, at these key inflection points, really want to be watching bearish um, uh, early reversal indicator, TSI below 20. This is another great call back here. This is the one from um, three weeks ago, I guess, and uh, the bearish RSI. And then most recently, you know, just last week, we saw bearish ERI, TSI below 20. We've Now we've just have the the signal line rolling over guys this market's heading lower um and and so it may not be what you want to hear but but that is my read on this and there's no reason for it to go higher uh let me turn off this eri because i just want to see if we had now the thing is uh, on this one and i want to be careful not to draw it to what i want it to do but so one two three four five you know we've got multiple multiple rejections on this upper area and uh so i did post something similar to this over in the uh the m3 chat earlier which was a vertical version of this but we have this wedge pattern forming so we're not out of the game but let's say it in line with you know our cycle theory that we kind of drift down into here into august and if we are going to get a breakout, it's going to be kind of later. And I, I drew, drew that a bit wide. It would be more sort of like this uh, into sort of late August, September, I would imagine. But still, look at all that overhead supply. Um, now, this is total market cap. It aggregates all of the selling pressure. I'm not sure how it, how it does that. But again, um, you can see quite a bit of selling pressure here. And you see these overlaps within this. Um, that has means different levels here and here and in a larger version. So this 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 is bearish, you guys. We're in a, a you know potentially a wedge pattern. If we wanted to look at that here, uh, like that, uh, we look at the um, flag uh, bull flag scenario. So potentially we could come back down in this range, uh, right down around two trillion. We'd like to see two trillion hold, you know, and that would be that would be a great buying opportunity though if we see. A, a further dip down like that uh, into this lower green box down to that 2.2 trillion and then take off. Well, that would be very bullish, you know. So, um, I you know, I think it's certainly plausible. We go higher, maybe get to 80K on Bitcoin, you know, maybe 100K. My projections were higher, but um, some of the more bearish projections are that um, uh, that we we don't see that because of the recession and, uh, and the risk the, the economic data coming in and just the market structure on it. So I don't know you guys. Here's what I'm saying to you is that I would buy a Bitcoin above 72K, 74K for the next pump. But uh, there's some speculation that it goes to 80 and rolls over. We're going to trade what we see. As long as we're in an uptrending trend channel, it's a lot of tease, uh, then I'm bullish. I'd just rather be buying in the green zones back here. So what are our other signals telling us here if we were to overlay and look at our Bollinger Band Pro? You know, we've talked about the order block detector. Um, we see um, rockets we'll talk about in a little bit later. I mean, if you are here and you don't have the Crypto Mastery indicators, by the way, you definitely want to have those and need to have those to navigate these markets. The average true range is still in entry zone, so it's still showing bullish versus exit zone. I'll hop over to a one-hour, four-hour to get a little bit better look at this and open this up for you guys so you can see it better. 
and then I'll get to some can uh, some questions I see coming in. So um, this is a one hour, four hour, and we see these multiple levels of sell pressure here, both on Bitcoin at 67, at 70K. So even if it breaks through 70K, we still have this sell pressure up here on 72. So that's why I'm saying, like, I'm not going to be bullish really till we're closing above uh, really 73K and 74K because all this sell pressure up ahead. And uh, and so that's going to depress prices. We're, we're in a sell on the average true range. You can also use that as a dynamic stop loss. And um, so, for example, if you had bought back here, the stop loss could have been right here, would have been just stopped out as it went into sell, uh, sell zone. And that would have saved you from going down lower there. Um, and um, yeah, that, was, that was a reasonably good one. Uh, the TSI is getting a bit overbought here, but our signals are not, um, not lining up. So it's a bit of a chop. I think it's going to drift down here, maybe down to 64K where there is some buy support and, uh, and go from there. A little bit of buy support right below us on the hourly. These things don't always match up exactly. And um, that's, that's okay. So anyway, with that, that's the average true range. If we want to hop out over and uh, let me just answer a question too. We'll turn that off and we'll look at our Bollinger Bands so that um, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the Bollinger Bands here and, uh, and our radar tool. But uh, Perry says, do we need the monthly candle tomorrow eve to point above a certain level? Great question, Perry. Let's hop over to the monthly, uh, monthly chart. He's saying, do we need the monthly candle with the candle close on the monthly uh, tomorrow? Um, so the answer is, and I'll, let me read the rest of your question, but I can already see what we want. <clears throat> we would like to see a close, a bullish close above, to make it bullish engulfing above 68K, let's say. And that's not, I guess FOMC could rally this. You know, if they have bullish comments, pretty much they're not, they're not going to raise, they're not going to drop rates, most likely, uh, very unlikely. If they were, we would see a massive rally and a big old bullish engulfing hammer. Uh, and uh, we, that could be it. But, um, uh, I do think this area of congestion is a distribution zone. And the, the big question to keep in mind is where will the money come from to really push this thing higher? You know, we had all of this was ETF, uh, ETF. Um, sorry, that's not true. That's uh, I get blanked out in this monthly chart. But that run up to the ETFs is what drove it up to the new highs recently back here in uh, March, uh, March area. And um, and so. That is what we have to keep in mind. Where's the money going to come from? Uh, the U.S. elections aren't here. We won't be putting it in uh, any time before then. Uh, the whales, um, you know, it, it's it's a tough one because you really have to think about that. But anyway, that aside, we have an a a um not a it's not an ascending triangle. It's an ace. It's a symmetrical wedge here forming. And uh, I'm going to get rid of this candle. Actually, no. So um, I want to address this too. So the question is, if we come up above this 68K, that would be very bullish. Let's set an alert on that. And then I want to show you what I think happens. Okay. And uh, so we'll just, we'll call it 68K. I think that does it. It's a bit more. And then uh, we want to say, just buy. I'm going to say buy alerts. That way I know it means bullish. But um, if we don't, we could still break through the wedge, but it's kind of hard to see on the monthly time frame. You know, it would have to still be in that really in that 68K region, like we said. However, um, do you guys remember uh, the and this line here? I don't know what that one is. It might be from a weekly chart, but the midpoint, you guys know that these the midpoint of these big vector candles usually does retest. And if that happens, if we come down here. And that back to the 51K region, that's why this arrow is here. You know, that way, in that sense, the new trajectory of the kind of blow-off hyperbolic blow-off top has been invalidated. But if we come back down in here to the 52K region or 51.5, that's another screaming buy. Um, but it's also a reason why I'm saying I would not be fully invested here. Uh, you know, it, it would be prudent to be somewhat invested but I don't know, you guys. Um, <clears throat> I'm I'm gonna have my finger on the uh, the trigger here. If we start breaking this 60k level, I'll be out. I'll be getting out. I'll just sell. You know, I should probably put a Bitcoin on a hard wallet and just put it in the safe. But I'm a trader. I don't want to. I you know I don't want to sit on it if I think it's going to ten thousand dollars below. I'll buy it back here for less. 
So that's what um, I'm suggesting. It's impossible to predict. FOMCs in the comments after that are really going to determine, but um, but that would be something to uh, to keep an eye on. And if we do have a big sell-off here down to the 50K region, I think that's a buying opportunity. And uh, and then we would see a, where's my TSI on the monthly? Um, the uh, Well, we will watch for our ERI on that. I know it's a lot to keep in mind, you guys, so let's not get too far down into the rabbit hole. But that just visually, that's what I would say. If um, and, and not to not to avoid the question, but or uh, the comment, it can be a little confusing. Try to elaborate all these time frames. I know, but our ERI again, if you're new here, our early reversal indicator only has fired four times, and both all four times were at the exact bottom, or almost the exact bottom in the markets. So back here, back in January, I was saying let's time it's time to get back in this market, bullish engulfing candle early reversal indicator. Again, that ERI, that really forecasts, what it does is it sees programmatic institutional buying. We didn't know why it worked. We just saw a pattern, but then we sort of unpacked it. What is it really looking for? Again, back here, almost at the exact bottom in March of 2019. And then of course we had this one back here in April of 15, almost at the bottom, we had some dips below. This is where you really wanna be buying these markets. And then the first time it was back here, just after the dip in Jan 20, 2012. That's the only time, four times that that's fired. And uh, so we wanna pay attention to this. And so, um, you know, we did have it back in here, but it doesn't mean at this point, yeah, at this point I look for the weekly ERIs for the tops. So that's why this chart is uh, limited sort of the monthly. And that's what we use it for predominantly. So let's look at some coins, you guys. Um, actually, before we do that, I'm going to look at, I want to share the uh, Bollinger Bands with you. Let me just do this here with these circles and add that into a uh, new group. Uh, if you don't know how to use this uh, tool, by the way, it's great. It's the uh, object tool it allows you to kind of not have to delete your various, um, now that I've lost it here, what is this thing called? Uh, the, uh, that would delete your studies. So I want to do this circle and I want to put it in a great. So I'm going to rename this. I hit re remove. So rename this as circles. Okay. Now I can just move the other circle in there to clean up the chart. And then all I have to do is uh, do the little eyeball. Why won't that, there we go. So eyeball on that. And then those where did this circle go? Uh, okay, sometimes you have to click it a couple times. Hmm, interesting. Never had that happen before. Anyway, well, now we it's still there. I know how to move it. I've also got the arrows we can turn on and off. Right, point is, this is what we want to be looking at. And, whoops, all over the place. Sorry, guys, I'm click happy. I've been a little out of practice. Been out of town for a week. Uh, Bitcoin conference was amazing, by the way. If you ever get a chance to go, like next year, you should go. So um, Bollinger Bands, um, these are our modified Bollinger Bands. As you know, uh, the standard Bollinger Bands do not work for crypto and their normal settings. Ours do. And so uh, we're seeing the Bollinger Bands tightening. So, I mean, it sort of looks like this wedge pattern will kind of go sideways for a while. And then if we're going to see a breakout when those Bollinger Bands tighten. But what I want to share is that uh, people always ask, you know, when should I take profits? Uh, and these Bollinger Bands are great for that. When it hits the upper Bollinger Bands, is a great time to uh, take some partial profits. And uh, and when it goes down in the green zone, it's a great time to buy some. But you can see here, when it breaks above that upper Bollinger Band, this is, was a great take profit area. And then, of course, it dropped all the way back down here. Uh, here's another example on Bitcoin where uh, it hit and broke above the upper Bollinger Band sell signal. And here again, just taking a breather, uh, take some profits. It did sort of inch higher up. This works great on the altcoins as well. So uh, we definitely watch this. But anytime it's above that upper Bollinger Band, we do not want to be buying. And so uh, we're currently now back down in the center area. Uh, let's see. Paul says, regarding Bollinger Bands, what does it mean when they get really close together for several days or weeks, creating the appearance of a really sk skinny tunnel or channel. Yeah, that that just means usually that's kind of low volume um, coin that's just going sideways. What we want to look for is this pinching pattern. So you see how they're sort of pinching like that and, uh, you, you know, pinching because when it comes to a head, that's usually when the volatility is the lowest and then it breaks out, usually in the direction of the overall trend. 
So here with the Bitcoin, you know, let's say this thing goes sideways, sideways, and these pinch a little more, I would be leaning toward a break or another attempt higher. But, um, you know, let's see an example of what uh, if the thing is after the fact. And once they move on, it widens the channel and you don't see that Pac-Man pattern uh, as much. But down here is where you saw it pinching and then it pushed up. So um, in terms of going sideways, do you have an example really skinny sideways tunnel or channel uh, give me an example paul I'll pull it up here i think it's a good segue to go into some altcoins as well how are we doing on time we're just at an hour so we'll do a little bit of altcoins and looking at the overall markets here and uh just taking a skim down through everything the vix is up the uh let's see Solana sol dominance was up the other day surprisingly let's see phantom coin showing a little bit of life but not really everything nothing's happening here and uh, everything's below their 21 and 50 day EMAs for the most part. So these are bearish. Uh, I am watching the radar. Um, guys, just if you're new to this too, the radar is great. It's a multi time frame radar. If it's all green, green is go. That's when I'm most bullish when it's all red or if it's all red, we're usually at a market top and time to be getting out of the market. Uh, this is partially, it's bullish on the daily weekly. So that says we could push higher on phantom coin and you know up into this range maybe, but on the monthly quarterly still bearish. So likely phantom coin continues to drift down. And I'm surprised, we've done very well with phantom coin in the past and I'm uh, surprised to see that thing continue to bleed out. But um, at any rate, that's what happens. And this is crypto. The money's been flowing out for a while now into other projects. And uh, here's one that we call, like called two days ago, AIOZ, that had a nice little push up, sold some here last at the upper Bollinger Band. So here's a good example of how that upper Bollinger Band should be your take profit zone. And this will maybe pull us up on a one hour, four hour. This thing had a nice pump um, two days ago after hours. And, uh, and I wasn't watching the daily, I was watching the one hour, four hour, but anytime these coins that get above that Bollinger band, they almost always sell back down below. So last night I had a sell order in right in this range at, um, uh, 67 cents. I got out at 67 cents and, uh, also, um, some other, um, I sold some more in here that I didn't have a limit order on. And my, my ideal for this one here, uh, this was a previous trade pick. Uh, if it pulls back, I still like it. I like this back here on a pullback to the 21 and 50 day. But uh, there's an example of that Bollinger Band and the order blocks. This was a great example of buying in the buy block down here. So there's going to be very limited options here if we get kind of a bearish market. I don't see a lot that I like. So uh, let's see. Uh, okay, random alts. All right, Perry, no problem. I'm Paul, I mean, I'll try to find one uh, as we go through this. Uh, let's see. Uh, you want to look at MKR? Uh, we'll also look at the hot movers for today. Sometimes we'll see those. But uh, in a down market, we want to be careful. This is, um, let's see, MakerDAO, I believe. And so we'll pull it up on, um, uh, is this right? MKR is not really, it's down today. But but the chart's not bad. Okay, well, let's, let's tell you what, Barry, um, that's a nice example of a pinching Bollinger Band. And so because we're riding on the uptrend and we're sitting above the ice, you know, the, the 21 day and the 50 day exponential moving average, I call the 50 day, the thick ice. And because if you fall down, once you go fall through the ice, you know, you're drowning, you're drowning, you try to pop up your head above water, you're drowning. And then once you get below the thick ice, you're really hosed, you popped your head up here, but nope, you're drowning, you're drowning all the way down and hitting your head on the ice. So, so that's just a fun analogy. But now that we're back above the ice, uh, we were on stable ground, pinching Bollinger Bands on MKR. Let's see what else we can see. We've got our TSI starting to turn up in green. That's bullish. So I think what we could do here is jump over to the, uh, the um, yeah, look at that, you guys. Uh, so I wouldn't go all in on this, but um, is that a rocket? Actually, let's see. Let's go to the trade success checklist. And no, I thought that might be a rocket, but uh, didn't quite get it. And... So no problem. Let's do this. And I'll turn on the ATR. We're in the entry zone on the ATR. So it's, it's a little advice with these things, you guys. You know, I don't like to have all of them on it all the time. I'll toggle them on and off and sort of see, is it worth going and looking deeper? But we're, we're on an entry zone on the average true range. Bollinger Bands are tightening. And we have the uh, ERI as green. So I'm going to hop over to the, the trade success checklist here. And let me just uncheck over. Okay, so we're doing the bullish sign of this, the bullish scenario. 
Um, so let's see. So let's unpack this together. We have, what do we have on the chart? My computer's frozen. What happened? Uh-oh. Can you guys still hear me? Uh, somebody. Uh-oh. My, my mouse is frozen. Okay, can you see him? Can you still see me? Something's gone. I went click happy there, and uh, it, the the window froze. So you can see my video moving. Problem is, I can't. Make, did my mouse die? Hold on, guys. I'm do some uh, emergency mouse surgery, and see if popping out the batteries and spinning them around sometimes will give me a little bit more juice. Well, I got a rusted battery, you guys. Look at that. Working without a net here. Um, I might have to run to the other room and get another battery. Let me see if I can replace this. Sometimes you get a little bit, maybe another 20 minutes out of this, but uh, no, I got nothing. Okay, well, you know what? You guys get a drink of water, get a cup of coffee. I got to get a new mouse battery. That uh, happens always at the worst times, doesn't it? All right, I'll be right back. Well, guys, we have a small problem. I have a ton of uh, the AAA batteries. I don't seem to have any um, AA batteries, so I'm going to have to uh, find one. Um, hold on a second, you guys. I probably have one somewhere. I just This has never happened. Hold on. All right, I got a green light. That's a good sign. Uh, but um, yeah, guys, my um, screens are frozen. Yeah, Perry, it's what I uh, so I was looking for. I couldn't find one. Um, <clears throat> well, hang on. I'm going to stop the share for a minute, you guys. I uh, just realized I might have too much stuff open. And I need to um, close a bunch of things. So that might do it. 
and didn't get a chance to do a fresh reboot. Uh, so let's see. I'll close that. Should be back in business here, but but no, this. All right, I, I'm gonna close. Tell you what, we're gonna get away from the trade success checklist. That thing's kind of buggered for some reason. You guys have seen it before, uh, so I am going to. Uh, yeah, Perry. Now, oftentimes I'm rebooting beforehand. I haven't had a chance to do that since um yesterday. So apologies, you guys. This is a massive machine with 64 gigs of RAM and all kinds of things. But every now and then it will still bounce out apologies all right you guys let's dive back into it i'm going to share my screen again and let's do that and give you guys some extra some extra stuff for sticking around all right so maker dow getting that bullish eri and we are in entry zone again if i had the trade success checklist open i'd be checking these off and every time you have a new one uh it gives an additional score so basically uh let's see where did my window go and okay you guys can still see it it's all that matters uh and what happened here hold on okay uh so basically eri check so we've got one out of 21 we have the uh, dynamic atr check that's the entry zone so we have bollinger bands tightening that's not a, a signal to buy but the 21 day and 50 day i do like that they've recently crossed the next thing i'd be looking for here and what i'll do is clean it up a little bit uh, and a lot of what we do and teach in our, our M3 Active Trader is watch for these trend channels. So here's a little bit extra alpha for you guys. Just watch the trend channels. If we start be breaking up into a new upper trend channel, then sooner we can determine that is a new upper trend channel, the better, because then we kind of know our guidelines, right? So it does appear on MakerDAO that this is starting to create a new upper trend channel. I would be a little bit cautious just because the overall market looks going like it's going to go down. But um, this based on this, I think Maker, what am I on? Uh, yeah, Maker Dow, for some reason it's highlighting mobile, um, is looking fairly bullish here. Let's look at our other signals. Bullish on the uh, green TSI, so I like that. And uh, so, you know, this could, this in this scenario, we would want to add to the position as these other ones turn green. So is this a screaming buy? It's not a screaming buy, but I kind of like this pattern that it's breaking out above uh, the old trend channel. The 21-day 50 EMAs are turning up. The Bollinger Bands are tightening. Uh, we partially a green on the radar. So, you know, it's uh, $3,200 for these things. I mean, but for a nice swing trade, sure. I like it. Uh, you guys want to look at anything else? Uh, let's see. Yeah, Perry, could be any number of things. Um, you can see here, alt tab, check switching windows. Yep. Did all that. So stop it for us. What I, Perry, I don't know what you mean by the peanut <laughs> comment, but anyway, let's look, I want to, your, your time's valuable. I want to give you some alpha here. Like, um, AIOZ is one of our recent picks. I, I don't know what happens here, but I like the fact that it's back above us, a resistance zone around 60 cents. Keep an eye on this thing. It tends to pump after hours and um, had some nice action last night, but uh, watching those Bollinger bands. So uh, for upwards, uh, you know, sell pressure. Okay. So that's another one that's been up here in the uh, recent uh, downturn and um, other coins just going through a bunch of these. Uh, let's look at the hot movers. This is just kind of my personal list. And I can also pull up our crypto mastery list as well and uh, some other sectors. We do try to keep these classes to an hour so we don't have a whole lot of time. But uh, just jumping through this, not a whole lot green. We've got XRP. I did say we'd look at XRP. So, um, okay. I mean, look, I, I'm agnostic. I like the chart here. I keep an eye on XRP. It's mostly green on the radar. We have uh, our ERI Pro shows money flow back in here. It's riding up against its 21-day exponential moving average. And those Bollinger Bands are tightening. So I'm curious what it looks like here. Uh, unfortunately, this does not look very bullish um, on these. But what you want to do when you think it has bullish overall and these may be inconclusive on a daily is jump over to a weekly. So, but it is seeming a bit overbought on the weekly with XRP. And so for me, I'm, I don't love, I'm not loving this chart. You know, um, it is, uh, it has downward sloping trend channel and, uh, you know, the XRP army, nothing against you guys if you're any out there, but 
but like to hype up the littlest thing. <clears throat> and so for me, I just want to see this thing finally get back above a dollar, you know, to be honest, because it's uh, with all the lawsuit uh, wins and positive things, this thing should be higher. And so, I mean, this, this is a little bit tricky. So that's um, one to be a little careful of. Comp USA, I always, I always get that wrong, compound. Because <laughs> it says Comp USD. I always say Comp USA. You guys remember the computer store? Uh, so not much happening there. XLM, Stellar Lumens, not much happening. Although, hang on, hang on. I kind of, I wrote Lumens off for a while ago. <clears throat> That's an interesting chart, you guys. We have an ERI. And now I'd wait till the daily close. The early reversal indicator. Do we have, we have a TSI uh, turning up here. So I wouldn't be buying it yet, but I'd be keeping an eye on this and uh, maybe bullish engulfing candle. This this is a nice, looks like a nice little swing trade happening in the works. And it doesn't have a lot of overhead supply up here. So that's a good one to keep an eye on. Uh, Polygon, Matic, all that news about uh, didn't do anything, did it? Remember when they said that's a security dumped like crazy. Now that they're saying it's not going to be held to that, it's just sitting there. Um, all right. You know what? I'm I, I'm going to suggest I'm be very careful buying anything right now when everything is down. But what we'll do is we'll say hot movers, uh, total trading view. Uh, crypto, I know I misspelled it, but it should get it. Uh, go to download. The, yeah, um, Ruben, you can download that. Uh, the link is in the chat or you can go to our website. I'll show you guys that again. And you can just hop over. My computer is bogging down a bit. Uh, hang on. I have, I'm going to close the this study and this one and this one. Yeah. And so uh, we'll close out some of those because we're running a lot of data there in the iBit. Uh, okay. So basically the hot movers for today. Bitcoin gold, again, I like to see uh, both a certain amount of volume and market cap. Um, Bitcoin gold, I just kind of, I don't know that I want to open that. Uh, nobody's talking about it. What is it? It's a crypto uh, price 25, rank 128. I guess so. You guys ever heard of Bitcoin gold? I mean, I, I know a Bitcoin cash. I have never heard of Bitcoin gold, actually. And uh, so we'll see what happens. Let me go down to the bottom here. Uh, ETH. Let's see, <laughs> XRP, extra rigged, rigged project. That's funny, Perry. Um, let's see, uh, we can look at Ethan Saul. Okay, Bitcoin. Well, all right, look, guys, you, you've heard me say I'll trade sheep and goats if the chart looks good. And so uh, here, um, here's a bullish engulfing. No, no, I'm sorry. I, I paused there. There's no volume on this, though. Look how thinly traded this is. This is a pump and dump. Don't go anywhere near this. Where is this traded even? Crypto, Bybit, BitGet. Um, let me see if it's on Bybit and BitGet, they're margin trading, but they didn't, it's not pumping on there on those exchanges. Okay, so I knew I didn't want to open this. Uh yeah, ignore. Okay, anything else? Angola, very low market cap, low volume, no galaxy fan token, eleven million sports fan tokens. I don't know. Well, let's take a look. And C, I don't even know how to say that, you guys. Galatasaray, that's a terrible name. Um, oh, you guys, yeah, you guys want to look at some things. Let me let me close this. Yeah, look, so anytime you see these top topping tails and huge wicks, stay away from these. These are pump and dumps, and they'll just get you hurt, get you in trouble. And so, um, yeah, let's uh, jump over and look at. Ethan, Ethan Saul, sure, we'll get to those. TRX is here. So uh, TRX, and I'll look at it on Binance. These are all perpetuals, though. Where is it on spot? And uh, Bybit, is that Tron? That's Tron, isn't it? Has been, have not looked at Tron. We actually, we, we used to accept crypto, and we had somebody pay us in Tron one time. And uh, anyway, low, look at that blood red on the radar. Who is who? Yeah, Ruben, uh, TRX not looking good here. We have a bearish uh, ERI, and um, it's in an uptrend, but it's all red on the radar. That looks horrible. 
uh, all time frames. Our TSI is rolling over. I would not buy this. If you have it, I would sell it. And 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 where would you buy it back? In this buy block, right in this range around. I would put my. You could catch it on the top 0. 0.125. You could buy some at 0. 0.125. But the midpoint of these buy blocks has been very good to us. So even in this 0.1225, maybe get above it, both on the buy side and sell side. But um, yeah, uh, TRX, let's look at a weekly though. Let me see. Uh, yeah, not not good on the weekly either. I think this at least pulls back to, the, again, that 125 level. That's the 21-week EMA. So that's my read on, on that one. Let's take a look at Saul. And uh, so Saul here. Got a bunch of lines on this thing. Let's see, is that going to be too confusing? What in the world is that thing? Very sloppy arrow there. Um, so what we have here is a lower high. Um, it's a topping tail. I think Saul comes back down. This is on a weekly time time frame. So, um, okay. But the the daily shows some buyers. Yeah, and, and so I I actually sold my Saul last night. <laughs> Saul's lots of S's and I put in buy orders. You see this uh, at 170 and 160. I, I buy limit orders at 161 rather. Uh, it, that's that midpoint here. I bid a little high. That's the 50 day moving average and the 21 day moving average. So I think Solana comes down to 160 or 170 and those would be buy points for another swing higher. Okay. And let's take a look at ETH. Uh, ETH is putting in a higher low, so it's trying to come up, trying to break out. So we have it sort of a symmetrical wedge forming, but um, it's uh, it's really not conclusive. Uh, I know this is a lot hard to read, probably on your screens, all that. No, not too bad. Uh, so I'll zoom out on this. Yeah, I I just uh, saw is holding its twenty one week EMA. Sorry, ETH holding its twenty one week EMA. But our signals are just sideways, and this is kind of this just shows, guys. We're in August. Here's a reminder: we're in August. Uh, the big traders sell in May and go away. They're still out the Hamptons. They're actually probably August. They're mostly heading out to the Hamptons if they are not there already to go sip their pina coladas by the pool. Trading volumes are very low, and so I would you know probably in late August, early September before we see any big movements. So I mean, I almost suggest. I know we really tired of waiting around for this thing to go we want some excitement and some profits but uh i'm leaning toward just stay the f out of the market and and wait until we have clearer signals because even if we push higher and it's swing trades only you guys uh we're not breaking out to new all-time highs anytime soon okay um radar looks okay on eth yeah it looks okay um that can change i mean the monthly chart on eth i guess we could look at that and but um the longer time frame usually will overpower the shorter time frame so if the monthly is bearish then the weekly will and daily will likely turn bearish and so i i just i wouldn't have too much of it uh and you, you know the eth uh, there's the, the news that's hitting today is you know the eth etfs uh, there was a bunch of outflows, by the way. I almost posted that. and uh, But essentially, you know, it's never going to be nearly as much as Bitcoin. I, I won't say never. I just, in the near term, it's not seeing the kind of flows that we wanted to see on the Bitcoin ETF, on in the ETF for ETH. <clears throat> so the, the most bullish thing here is there, it's putting in a higher low. Now, what would you read for this? This is a little bit of the training we usually talk a lot about in the uh, M3 class. Okay, so here right now I'm saying, all right, the bottom was here. We're putting in a higher low, and we have a buy block. We have some sell pressure here, but what I'm seeing is the potential for a new upper trend channel, and that's what we want. We want to buy, you know, in the lower edge of the trend channels, ideally above the 2150 day, and trade them up, you know. Uh, but it's just, again, it's weak. Look, the volumes have dropped off very quiet. Uh, 21 MA. Um, Ruben, I like the exponential moving averages. I just find those to be better, uh, you know, and uh, there's a case for both. But in terms of certainly on the way up, you can see some like riding the the MAs. 
But for me, the more significant crossovers and support and resistances are on the EMAs. Personally, um, I will sometimes look at a, a 21 week, you know, we could certainly put on a 21 week on something. Uh, but it, it gets to the point where, you know, you don't want to have too many because if there's conf conflict, then you have analysis paralysis. But um, yeah, that's just me. Let's see. In your opinion, does Bitcoin break 90K before the end of the year? Um, yeah, I think so by the end of the year. But um, there, there's the reason I hesitate is there's kind of a growing body of people thinks that 80K is the high. And there's a study they did on on the past cycles. They did, you know, the math works and checks out and says 80K is the high, will be the next high. And But, we, you know, we were all like, no, that's crazy. That's crazy town. Why? There's no way. We're going to 100. But um, if we really start to think about this and be like, you know, uh, the big money, they're, this, they're likely selling up in this range. Sure, they can pump it up into here. But we want to be careful around 80. And uh, there's a, uh, I'll, I'll, you know, this is a fluid. It's very much a fluid, um, it, it's, what is it, <laughs> uh, in via situation. New information equals new decision. And that's why you're in the right place coming to these classes. Uh, we do talk about these things a little bit more depth in the M3 class. So I highly recommend checking that out at moonstream.io slash M3. And there's in the chat and having access to these indicators because that's really our guiding light with all of these things but um but yeah um so the the chart that i posted to some private clients today i'm not sure i want to show it to you because it'll scare you guys to death but i'm um, just to be aware of these are i have my private clients have six and multiple six and high six figures in the market and so um you, you know i want to alert them to the fact that hey this thing may not get to where they're expecting it to, and we have to be prepared for this. And uh, this is uh, my private client chat here. So uh, in the study that um, it, it, that somebody had put out, who's a big trader in Japan, has a million dollars short and plans to double it, thinks that you know the potential is for topping out here above just above 80 as a Wyckoff sign of strength, like we saw the second top in 2021 and then the Wyckoff pattern kicks in and they just, and it goes, he thinks 20 K. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, he, he'll be covering around 48 K, which is near that 50 K region. I think 50 K is still possible. Um, but, um, you know, a deeper or a deeper drawdown and uh, seeing the bear in 2025, 26 with the bull really coming back in 2027 and hitting hundred K so um, I don't know. That's way too far off in the future to, to predict. There's too many variables. It's a fluid situation. I just want to alert people that there is a case for a base case for you know, 80K being the top. And uh, another prominent uh, YouTuber that, you know, this rule of 5.3. But it's, you know, you have to sit here and realize but this is all kind of like mental wizardry, mathematical wizardry trying to predict the future. Um, new information equals new decision. Do I think we could hit in 90K? I think we could easily hit 90K, 100K. Um, I earlier in the year have a study and in our M3 class, we go over that, the 10 paths to 155, 250K Bitcoin. Uh, and uh, the, the 10 things that can get us there are starting to happen slowly but surely. Um, but uh, we need all of them really to hit for that to explode. And a big part of it is that liquidity cycle and so um which that first chart that i showed earlier in this class today um yeah i i know um i know perry so uh and the institutions have a lot of volume which takes time for them to move uh, and so but but keep in mind that you know the institutions typically are buying back in here you know if we change out of a monthly go to a weekly that wyckoff pattern let me get rid of all the lines here uh you know they're buying down in here this is the, the wyckoff accumulation phase this is the markup and this is the distribution. So, um, you know, there's a lot of salt pressure here at the 70 K region and we still are technically in a bull flag, but we've got to break above the high. And, uh, and that's the key and, and convincingly. So again, uh, there's at this point, I, I would say this is the hardest to call right now. Um, for me calling the top in 2021, relatively easy end of 2021, 2022, also, end of December of 2022, when we actually released M3 Trader, we rebranded it from Active Trader to M3 Active Trader. And I was saying, get it's time to get in. January, 
uh, right here, I was getting back back in also September, October of 2023. I was saying uh, for our retire rich class, we were our 400 and 500 percent winners started there. So it's really timing the market. Um, you know, many say time in the market is better than timing the market. True, but I like to do both. And right now, this thing that we're doing could go either way, you guys. All right, so um, I've got to be nimble. I would not be using leverage. I would not be fully invested. Uh, I was la just a couple of days ago when Bitcoin was running up. But when we when we started, we lost the gains from last week. Uh, I, I sold most of my altcoins. And, um, you know, I can't argue that this is not a good looking trend line right there. Okay, so... Sorry for all that other noise, but uh, we got to break out of this wedge. It's either going to break higher or lower, and that my, my thoughts are wait. It's better to wait and see which way. So that's all I have for you guys. Um, yeah, twenty k again. I, I think it's very unlikely, you know. And but is it possible? Uh, a lot. If we hit a massive recession, keep in mind all of this stuff is purely speculative. There's really not all these altcoins. They don't have any earnings. They're not making any money. When the top is in, they're all gonna bleed. They're all gonna blow out 80 percent, 90 percent again, guaranteed. Uh, and Bitcoin usually 70 percent. So if we, if this was the near turn top, you know, I've been saying since last year, maybe, maybe this is like 2013 where we have a, a, a an initial top and then a mini crash and then another peak. So, so we just have to be prepared for everything. But right now, on. Uh, you know, it was interesting. We had a bullish ERI a week ago, but the signals are inconclusive. When in doubt, stay out, I would say. And uh, that way, preserving cash and preservation of capital is paramount. Write that on your wall and remember that. So right now, we don't have a lot uh, of opportunity, things to look at. I wouldn't be itching to trade anything, buying anything. You know, we, um, uh, you know we've got some earnings See AI chip slump is earnings test trust and AI rally. You know the the hot sectors, the hot narratives are just kind of quiet right now. And the other thing I don't like is that we've broken above our downtrending channel in the DXY, and and that's that we need the DXY to drop for the Bitcoin to rally because it's inversely correlated. Uh, it's not confirmed yet. I guess possibly we could still widen the downtrending channel because this one's a bit skinny. So we still have that potential. I we'll have to see what the DXY starts to do. I already have an alert on the DXY for if we start crossing down below the 104 on the DXY, I'd be buying crypto. Um, yeah, Ruben, um, thanks. So we do have we can work with you on on that a bundle. And uh, what I would suggest uh, here is reach out to us. And let's see, the best way to contact us uh, would be our support. But I don't want to have to send you there. Um, you know, to reach out to us and Myrene, if you're here, maybe you could kind of uh, send Ruben a note for uh, how to get in touch with us because, um, you know, some people they're like, Hey, I want to get everything. What can I get? And, um, you know, I would highly recommend that, uh, depending on how much you have in the market, not to make this commercial for everybody, but, uh, everyone needs and wants different level of attention and service. And, uh, you know, so, uh, some people it's private client work, some people it's M3, and uh, some it's retire rich and some of them, uh, some of you guys are in all of them. Uh, so let's see, let me do this. Um, got a few more questions here and uh, let me just shoot a message. And uh, let's see, Perry says, I haven't made it far enough into the Villa Verde's market cycles. And uh, let's see, but I'm hoping to learn about the regular cycles for Bitcoin and others that will help predict too. Yeah, Perry, that's a great course. Um, we just released a market cycles course, you guys, by Juan Villaverde. And, um, you know, not to overwhelm everybody. If you're brand new, you don't need all this stuff. Start where you're comfortable. And as more of it makes sense, you can add to your um, skill set. So, and I'm just going to shoot... Um, uh, those emails over to you privately at Ruben for Myrene and myself so that we can get you the help you need. Um, you know, on the market cycles, though, it's um, yeah, the it's I'll keep you posted. I haven't gotten far enough into it either, but he was showing the market cycles kind of a bottoming in August, I thought. So that plays into what I'm saying. And, uh, you, you know, I think it's it's just a time to be really cautious about getting into anything. 
And I do think we roll over. Bitcoin continues lower. The ERI uh, signals are starting to line up. I mean, um, on the daily basis, we have a bearish ERI TSI signal. So we're, we're heading lower on Bitcoin. How low? I think probably into the 62K range. So um, now we could hold on the 21 and 50 day EMAs. But um, for that, I'll be watching the one hour, four hour. It's just, uh, you know, in retrospect, I shouldn't have been buying, uh, you know, going into the Bitcoin conference near this top. I just thought it would, would probably rally farther and higher. So uh, I did get a great fill on that limit, um, 67 limit buy, and it pushed up. And I was just busy and and uh, would have should have sold that 70K. But anyway, long run, you know, just these three things right here are not lining up very well. Guys, I have to call it short, though. This class is usually only an hour, hour and a half. And it takes forever for it to render the recording. And so uh, where are we? I think we're about an hour 45. So let's see. Uh, Ruben says, Villaverde, real deal. Yeah, he is. And um, uh, I was with Max Wright this past week at the uh, Bitcoin conference and Mike, my partner. And uh, Juan didn't make it out. But um, we are having some conversations about bringing Juan on the team and doing more, having a more deeper relationship with uh, Max Wright. So stay tuned for that, everybody. All right. Uh, look forward to seeing you guys next week. And for those of you in M3, I've got some other new things to share with you. And uh, we'll keep an eye out for some coin picks. But, um, you know, I do think it's going to probably be a quiet summer uh, next couple of weeks. Uh, you never know. But, um, you know, September is generally when the big money comes back in and where things get fun again. And, of course, leading into the rate cut and into the uh, election cycle, the liquidity machine will start turning on, I believe. So it's just, you know, time to, to practice your trades, sharpen the saw, and uh, wait for the trades. Let the trades come to you. Uh, thank you, Perry. Yeah, hey, I'm going to screenshot that. Let's send that over to Max, and uh, we, would, uh, we would. We're building a dream team, uh, potentially, but some of you may know uh, that, um, you know, Mike's kind of, he's kind of getting on closer retirement, so we're, we're making sure there's a seamless... Uh, path for that, uh, for letting him do that. Um, so anyway, with that, you guys take care, enjoyed it. And uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow in M3 Trader. Bye.